Okay, let's take a moment and think about fluency and activities, other activities you can do to promote fluency, like partner work, partner reading and readers theater. And I wanna start with partner reading. And let me see if I can just, uh, I can magnify the image a little bit um, because this image has a lot of different ideas here. So let me see if I can increase it just a little bit. Yeah, here we go, here we can see it now. So partner reading, we have a couple of different activities you can do that promote fluency. There's the I read, uh, I read, you, uh, you, you, uh, you turn. So one student reads, the other student turns the page. Okay, so, so the partner reading, there's an intrinsic, you know, student to student, you know, interaction, motivational piece. You're, you're reading with a friend. So as one, re so one, te one student's modeling as the other, uh, other students taking it in. Okay. Uh, and then you could switch it up. I read one uh, sentence, one, two, you read sentence three, four, you're taking turns. One student models, the other one listens, the other student models, the, the first one listens, or you do some choral reading reading the sentences at the same time, or you do some echo reading. I read sentence one, two, you read sentence one, two. There's lots of different ways here to do partner reading. Each one of these ways supports one of the aspects of fluency or, or all of them, but it's the, these activities are supporting speed, accuracy, proper expression. Um, so these are, this is definitely something that we could do to build fluency. Now here's another one, reader's theater. Now reader's theater might be more, pro, so if partner reading, partner reading might be really good for elementary, especially like, um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll do first through fourth grade. Okay. So lower element, first, second, third grade, maybe even you know, something, something in the younger grades, but, but, um, you know, reader's theater might be more appropriate for the upper elementary and middle school even high school. So what is reader's theater? Let's, the key word is theater. If you've ever acted in a play, yes, have you? I always ask this question during the classes and I get the weirdest responses. I, I like have to pull teeth to get the student to say, I was, I was Romeo, I was Juliet, I was Othello. I mean, it's like, what are you, what are you hiding here? I mean. The question is, have you ever been in a play? If you were, if you were in a in some type of play and you had a meaningful part, or it doesn't matter what part you had, share it. But if you've ever been in a play or read a monologue, let's take a, 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 a one of those monologues, a really juicy monologue, right? The first time you read it, you probably stumbled and you had to read it over and over and over again, reading it out loud or whisper reading it. You know, these are these activities of, of reading a text over and over again, building up that speed, fluency and accuracy and proper, you know, getting that expression out. This is a, this re doing theater and, and, and working with a script is a way of building fluency, right? Because in the act of, you know, learning that text, you're, you're learning the proper speed, accuracy and expression to read those words and pronounce those words. So readers theater or theater in general, in a lot of ways, helps with reading, oral reading fluency, okay? So the ideas that I'm saying to you, partner reading, readers theater, you should, in the back of your head, you should be thinking, you know, this stuff here, this thing, these activities could be used for fluency. Now let's apply that to some of the questions we're gonna see. Let's take a look. Uh, 